All right. So once again, good afternoon on site and good afternoon online. Okay. So as I have said today, we will have a review and we will focus on the two topics for the finals. Okay. So the two topics will be all about probability and of course the trigonometric ratio that we have just discussed. Okay, so here we go. We will go back with probability since uh, that was uh, quite uh, days ago. Okay, so how many weeks that we have discussed? So maybe uh, huh? many of you have forgotten all about probability. Okay. All right, so there you go. Uh, on site, can you see on your screen now? On site, can you see? Okay, all right. All right, so online, Otto, Kaimu, Dean, Feng Fu, and Pang. Okay, and me also is online. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Let us now start with the review. All right. All right, so online, can you turn on your video so that I can check in the camera? All right, guys. Okay, just for a moment, you turn on your video. Okay, on site, you okay now? Uh, can you see clearly on site? Okay. Yeah, yeah, what happened? All right, what happened on site? Okay, thank you, Pawan, for uh, opening your camera. Okay. Uh -huh. On site, is it okay now? Okay, so let us now start with the review and we start with probability. All right. Okay, so probability describes how likely it is an event that will happen. Okay, so that is the most basic when we are to describe probability. Now, Take note that in probability, we consider the events and outcomes. The events are the thing or the activity, and the outcome is the result. All right. Now, if an event happened, the result would be two. All right. It can be equally likely outcomes or not equally likely outcome. So what does it mean? Okay, what does it mean? Equally means the chances of getting possible outcomes will be the same. All right, so the chance is the same. So that is why it is equal, equally likely. And of course, not equally is the opposite. The chance of uh, getting the possible outcomes will be different. Now, how can we compare the two? How can we compare? All right. Now, if we have this one, event, four friends, namely A, B, C, and D, all right, entered okay, a kickboxing competition. There are only four contestants. So what is the event and what will be the possible outcomes? So this one is an example of events and outcomes. So the event there is the kickboxing competition. All right? So that is the happening. That is the event. That is the activity, a kickboxing competition, where there are four contestants joined. Now, what will be the possible outcome or possible results out of the activity? Now we take note that it is either A 
who will win the competition or B or C or D. Okay? Since there are four contestants. But it will depend on their skills. Again, it will depend on their skills. If they are good, then they are more likely to win. If they are weak, then they may lose. So therefore, this event is an example of not equally likely competition. Not equally because there is no equal in ability. It will depend on their strength. It will depend on how they will perform in the competition. So not equally likely outcome. Okay? So that is events and outcomes. Now, what about this one? Is this equally likely or not? equally likely okay first on site all right on site can you unmute yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. coin toss what is that one equally likely or not equally likely the event is coin toss on site not equally or oh. equally no, no, no. What no? No. Hey, American. Eh, eh. There are more than that. Okay. Equally likely or not equally likely? Coin toss. Telang, telang. Ah. No, ah, ha. Not equally. Yeah. Why not? There are only sides of the coin. Uh -huh. so therefore, it is equally likely. Why equal? Take note that there are two sides of the coin only. So the chance is the same. You can either get the head or the tail. So the chance is 50-50. So that means it is equal or equally likely. All right, online, Pawan, number two, bicycle race of 50 persons, equally likely or not equally likely? Not equally likely. Okay, so that's good, all right, that's correct. Not equally likely because it will depend how strong are they in cycling. It depends on their strategy to win the race, okay? So that means they have uh, no equal chance because again, it will depend on their ability, okay? If you compare that one with a twin cost, a twin uh, cost twin, uh, it will be equal because you can have just the head or the tail. So equal, okay? Number three, uh, on site. Rolling a dice, equally likely or not equally likely? On side. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Equally likely. That's good, all right? That's correct. Equally likely. Why? Because a dice have the same side of the object, okay? So it has the equal side. So when, when you roll a dice, when you throw a dice, then the chance that you can get one, you can get two, three, four, or five, or six is the same, okay? So they are equally likely. Now, what about number four, Kung Fu? Equally likely or not equally likely? A jar contains 23 red, 14 blue and 13 green marbles. Kung Fu. Equally likely or not? Equally likely. Uh -huh. Where are you, Kung Fu? All right. Otto. Equally likely or not? Equally likely. Number four. 
Ota? Hello, oh, where are you? Uh, okay, so what is that one? Equally likely or not equally likely? Number four. Equally. Again? Equally. Uh huh. Okay, what about Dean? What is your answer? Equally likely or not equally likely? Even? Not equally. Not equally, okay? So it should be not equally. As you try to look at that one, it is already not equal. Why? Because red is 23. Uh -huh. And blue is 14. And green is 13. So therefore, it is not in itself equal. So the chance that you can get the red is higher. Okay? It is higher because it has also many marbles compared to the others. And of course, the lowest chance will be for the green marble because it has the least number, only 13 compared with 23. Okay? So not equally likely outcome all right we continue so what is then the definition of probability all right what is then the definition of probability okay so please uh, read okay kaimuk all right please read the definition of probability is a measure on how likely something is going to happen. Okay, continue. The higher the, the higher the probability, the more likely something is going to happen and vice versa. All right, so when we say probability, it will depend, okay? It is a measure of how likely an event will happen or it will depend also on the situation and the condition or circumstance. Now, for example, if I say it will rain this afternoon, okay, so that is the event. It will rain this afternoon. Now, if you look up outside, the sky is very cloudy. So therefore, there is a higher chance or probability that it will rain compared when the skies are clear, all right? So that means when you say probability, it, we can measure how the event will happen. And we can even use the probability scale to describe on the certainty of the event, okay? Example, that the event is impossible to happen. So it will, there is 0% chance that it will happen. So impossible, okay? Now, for example, you will say, I can reach the sky. Uh -huh. I can reach the sky. So that is, the probability is very, very impossible because you cannot just barely reach the sky by jumping, okay? So that is impossible. And then, from 1 to 49%, that is, you can describe that one as less likely to happen. It will happen, maybe, but there is a very little chance or less likely to happen. Now, for example, if I uh, ask you, now, if um, someone buy a lottery ticket, okay, lottery ticket, so the probability there is a very less likely to happen that he will win. Why? Very small chance because the combination of a lottery ticket is you have only one out of the millions of combination of numbers. So therefore, it is very less likely to happen. But there is a chance. It is not impossible, but the chance is very, very small, okay? So less likely to happen. Or we can also have a 50-50 
chance, even or equal chance that the event will happen. For example, the very basic example of that one is the coin tossing. When you toss a coin, it just, you have only two options, head or tail. So 50-50 chance or even. Or we can also use more likely that an event will happen. Okay, so the example that I mentioned, okay? The example that I mentioned that it will rain this afternoon. So it is more likely to happen since the sky is very cloudy. So there is a higher chance, more likely that it will rain this afternoon. Okay. And of course, the 100% chance. Okay. So that's very possible, meaning 100% that it will happen, that the event will happen, okay? So it is very certain, it is 100% that it is possible to happen. Now, for example, okay, for example, everyone will die, okay? So that is the event. And of course, it is very possible, 100% that everybody will die, but we just don't know when, okay? So that means, 100% that the thing will happen, okay? So it is possible. All right, so that is all about the measure or when we are to use the probability scale, all right? From 0%, if we use percentage until 100%, or if we use decimal from zero until one, all right? So that is probability. Okay, let us now go to, okay, this one, this example. To calculate probability, we will have two, the matching outcomes over the total possible outcomes. For example, the coin tossing that I always mention. So there are only two possible or total outcomes. So one over two for the head, one over two for the tail, because there are only two possible outcomes. Now in a dice, in a pair dice with number or the dot one to six. So the matching outcomes, the possibility or the possibility that we get one is one over six, all right? One over six. Or probability that you get, you get two, that is two over six. That means matching outcome over the total possible outcomes. Now, for example, you uh, roll the dice twice. So what we do there is we multiply the matching outcomes and the total possible outcomes. We multiply that one with the total number of, okay, the event. Now example, if I toss a coin twice, I see heads and tails. So therefore take note that in a coin toss, you have the chance is one, over two, but it is said that it is tossed twice. So therefore we multiply this one by two. We multiply both the numerator and denominator by two. So that is why we get two over four or reduced to Lewis term, it is still one half chance or 50-50 chance that you get ahead and a tail, okay? So that is how to calculate, how to compute probability of an event. Take note, matching outcomes over the total possible outcomes, okay? Another example, if I toss the coin three times, so we multiply it by three and reduce the Lewis term, you get three over eight, Okay, so these are the 
probability of an event. Matching outcomes over total possible outcomes. And how many times you throw or how many times the event will happen, you multiply it and reduce your answer to lowest term. Okay? So that is probability. Now, let us go to independent events. All right? Independent events, meaning separate events combined together. Okay? Independent means separate events combined together. Okay, example. When a fair coin is thrown, what is the probability? Okay, so we mentioned that one. It can be the probability is one half. One out of two chances, a head or a tail. Okay, and when three fair coins are thrown. All right, so the probability is one over eight. Okay, so first coin times the second throw times the third throw. So that means you can get three over eight. Ah, sorry, one over eight. All right. Okay. Okay, so why is it one over eight? Now take note that the situation is that three, that the coins is thrown three times. So therefore, one half, all right, times three and times three. Okay, and then reduce to lowest term. All right, now, Independent events can also be shown in a form of a tree diagram, okay? So this is what we call as the tree diagram. Okay, so the events there is multiplied probability of event A times probability of event B times probability of event C and whatsoever or how many. Now take note, it is multiplied. So here, this is an example of two activities or two events. The coin toss, the first one, and a dice roll. Okay, when you toss a coin, of course, the chances are you can get either the head or the tail. But take note, it is combined with the second event, which is the rolling of dice. So when you toss a coin and roll a dice, you can get either a head and one in a dice, a head and two in a dice, a head and three, four, five, and six of a dice. Meaning combined, multiplied. H times one is H one. So that is why you have now here the probable result or the combined outcomes, okay? So event one, head times one, head times two, head times three. So that is why you have here H1, H2 until H6. In the same way, when you get the tail, it can be combined also with the dice roll. So therefore, you can have a tail and one, a tail times two, a tail times three, four, five, and six. So that is why you have these combined outcomes. When you get the head and you can combine it one to six with a dice, or you get the tail, combine it with one to six in a dice because Independent events, the probability is multiplied. Probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. All right. So again, we can use that one in a tree diagram. All right. So we can use this one. But if it involves higher numbers, then of course, use the formula probability of event one 
times the probability of event. Two, or, or there are three events, then probability of the th third event. Okay? So multiply that one. Okay. So we have now the probability. Let us now go to the trigonometric functions, the sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay? Uh, this is just fresh in our mind because we have just discussed this one. And we remember the Soka Toa. Sine, so opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent Toa, opposite over adjacent. Okay? So remember the good sine. Soka Toa. All right. Let us now go to tangent. Okay, tangent is pronounced as tangent. Okay, so tangent. And the Greek letter that represents the unknown angle is pronounced as theta. Okay, so tangent of theta, sine of theta, cosine theta. All right, so it is named as theta. Now, in a right triangle, remember the three important parts in a right triangle having 90 degrees. We have first to consider the hypotenuse and we consider the opposite side and we consider the adjacent side with reference to the given angle theta. All right? So remember, opposite, we consider the angle. So here, the opposite side is, of course, that one. And the adjacent or beside, adjacent means beside. So the adjacent side is this one. All right? And always, the hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle opposite to the 90 degrees angle. Okay? So, Everything in Sokatoa, in sine, cosine, and tangent, we use these three parts of the triangle. The hypotenuse, the adjacent, and of course, the opposite side with reference, again, to the unknown angle theta. Okay? So that the tangent of an angle given is that opposite over the hypotenuse. Ah, sorry, opposite over adjacent, soka toa. Okay, so remember that one. Okay, so tangent equals the opposite over adjacent in reference to the given angle. Okay, so you have there. Okay, so that's the parts of the circle. All right, so let us now go to sine. We have only seven minutes left. Now, sine function is the ratio of the opposite leg or the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Again, sine theta with reference to the given angle here is the unknown angle theta. The opposite, of course, is that side, opposite, over the hypotenuse. And hypotenuse, again, is opposite to the 90 degrees angle. So therefore, sine theta opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so remember that one. <clears throat> Next. All right, so consider this example. Given the theta, we said that sine of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so it's very obvious. 
opposite to the unknown angle and the hypotenuse is also opposite to the 90 degrees angle. So that if we are to get sine theta in that example, if the opposite side is eight and the hypotenuse is unknown. Now here you have given the two sides, the opposite and adjacent, but you don't know the hypotenuse. Right, so since this is a right triangle, we can apply the Pythagoras theorem to get the length of the longest side here. Okay, so using the Pythagoras theorem, we you have there c square equals a square plus b square, and c equals the square root of two hundred eighty nine, or this is equals to 17. And since we have said that sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, therefore, you now have sine theta equals 8 over 17. Opposite over the hypotenuse. So therefore, it is equals to 8 over 17. All right, so that is sine of theta. Next, all right, we can also find the length of the unknown side applying the sine function. Example, the sine of x of a right triangle is 0 0.6. Find the length of pq. All right, if you look at this triangle, PQ is this side. All right, so PR is 6 cm, and we have also this adjacent side with respect to the given sign. So therefore, sine theta equals PQ over PR, opposite over hypotenuse. And since sine of x is given, which is equals to 6, therefore, sine theta 0 0.6 equals pq over hypotenuse 6. So therefore, if we try to multiply that one and simplify, then pq equals 0 0.6 times 6 so that it is equals to 3.6 centimeters, okay? So therefore, this is 3.6 cm, okay? Again, you are given the value of theta and you have the hypotenuse. So you will able, you are able to answer the unknown side. And of course, we can also solve for the third unknown side. Okay, so that is all about the sine. Let us now go to the last, which is cosine. And the code name is so K. K means adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. With respect to the given unknown theta, all right, we said that adjacent side or beside over the hypotenuse opposite to the 90 degrees angle. Okay, so from there, we can now be able to solve. Okay, for example, cosine of that triangle is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Or if we put that one into an example, Cosine theta with respect to the unknown angle here is adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, 6 over the hypotenuse 10. Okay? So take note, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse 6 over 10 or simplify to lowest term, you have 3 over 5. Okay, remember to always 
simplify your ratio or the fraction to lowest term when you are to put the sine, cosine, 